There's someone new stalking the toy aisles. This is your look at the new NECA Toys Predator 2 Ultimate Stalker Predator. Stalker Predator, the younger, more reserved of the two Boar brothers, stalkers one half of the intergalactic mercenary duo known mostly from underworld rumors. Forced to flee their home at an early age due to an attack from a rival tribe, Stalker and Boar survived for years alone on their own with only one another to rely on. Becoming very good at surviving, they also became great thieves. Stalker, being the quiet, meticulous type, would turn to be the brains of the two, coming up with the plans while Boar was more interested in the execution. Despite their combined skills, they would eventually get caught stealing from a dangerous Yaucha elder known as Greyback, but instead of killing the youths, he decided to put their talents to use and train them to be part of his hunting tribe. The first hunt, Los Angeles, was only to observe, but it wasn't long before they were sent on their own hunt, and because of their teamwork, proved to be an effective duo. The brothers would later choose to remain off-world, taking dangerous jobs for hire, ranging from protection, extraction, and exotic trophy hunting, all organized by Stalker, who became very cunning and strategic leader. This, combined with Boar's aggression and bravery, makes no mission too much for the tribe of two. Before we begin the hunt, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the ultimate stalker predator stands. I'd also like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Stalker Predator that we're having a look at in this review. Stopping the tape measure to the very top of its head and reading the readout aloud to you, the viewing audience, Stalker Predator stands 8.1 inches in height. We can switch that to centimeters, revealing that the figure is 20.6 centimeters tall. The figure includes a lot of cool looking accessories, some of which are actually going to be worn on the figure. So as we go through each one of those accessories, if they are things that are supposed to go on the figure, we'll stop for that second and actually I'll show you where it goes on the actual Stalker Predator. With that being said, let's get a closer look at some of those accessories. We'll start first with one of the things that he's going to be wearing and that is his dart gauntlet. A really nice little side accompanying weapon that he can wield on the side of his forearm. You can see it's got some really nice, interesting details done to it. It almost kind of has like an organic look to it. It's primarily all done in this darker colored plastic, as you can see, like a dark gray plastic. And then what they've done over top of it is brushed this almost rusted gold color. On the tips, the darts themselves are painted in, in silver. Now to fit this onto the figure's arm, you'll see that there's a C clamp right there. Literally, all you're really going to do is pick, pick the figure up and put it onto his forearm. Now I find it's actually easier, instead of putting on this way, this is the broader end of the forearm, it actually find, I find at least, it's easy to put it onto the side of his arm like that, and then from there you can just spin it around. You can also bring it up just a little bit as well, but really the key I find is trying to find the most narrowest point on the figure's arm to snap that onto. And that really, really looks cool. Now, again, you can bring this a little bit further up as well. It's only so far it actually will stretch simply just because of the fact of the forearm is a little bit broader as the way you further go up on it. But it does look really cool. I think that looks really super neat. We'll put the figure down for a second. Moving on to other things he can certainly be wearing. He comes with his shoulder-mounted plasma caster cannon. Now, of course, this doesn't look quite right. There seems to be something quite missing on the top, and that is the cannon itself. We'll just flip this up. There's a little bit of articulation. There's a hinge right there, you can see. And then you're gonna take the cannon end of it right there and I'll just show you guys a closer look at what that looks like. We're gonna go ahead and take the two parts and there's a little peg on the end and there's a peg hole. So you can kind of understand where that's gonna be going. I find it also helps just to put your thumb behind it so the hinge doesn't fold down when you're trying to put pressure against it and just wiggle it. Not you, the gun. And there we go, you can put that in place and you've got yourself the shoulder-mounted cannon. The neat thing about the cannon, though, is not only does it have articulation, but you can also you can also take it and you spin it around, and it can also fold down into this open area right here, just like that. You can also bring this over, too, because there's a little track that slides back and forth. This track will play quite a significant role when you see when you put it on the actual back of the Stalker Predator. So I like the fact that you can fold up shop Put that away if you're not going to be planning on using it and displaying it with the, the cannon actually sticking up. 
I do think that's a really nice touch on their part. Now to take that and put it onto the figure, spin it around, and you'll have to move the hair out of the way. There's this elevated area on the back of his armor, and you'll see it perfectly fits the same shape as the recessed area on the back of the cannon. All you do is just fit this in place. It's basically more frictioned than anything else, and just snap that in place like so. Now where this track comes into play is the fact that with the track being something that can slide back and forth, obviously he's not going to be able to do much shooting if the cannon is way over here. But because the track allows it this to slide over, you can also then bring this up, bring this around, and now you've got yourself a visible, accessible cannon that can be fired off the shoulder of the Stalker Predator. I think that's really super cool. So I like that. That's a really nice little intricate touch on NECA's part to actually have something that only not only swivels back and forth like your traditional plasma caster, but also the idea that you can actually fold this up as well and slide that down into place. Put the figure down. Let's resume with the rest of the accessories he comes included with. Uh, where do we start next? Well, he comes included with a combi stick. He comes with two versions, actually, of the combi stick. One retracted, one extended. Not really much does change when you look at the two side to side. It's just literally the fact that you've got a more extended version of the exact same combi stick. Really nice detailing, actually, on both of these. Let's see if I can actually get in there and show you guys. I really like the way that these were painted. Uh, kind of given a real dark, dark coloring to them. Primarily, I would say, kind of borderlining rust almost. you got the brown on the middle section, or the hilt, I suppose, of the combi stick. And as the stick extends out, you can see it gets afforded all this additional rusted red. And that looks really super cool. Um, it does, doesn't have, actually, it seems to have no place on the figure where you can store at least the retracted combi stick. There's no clip or anything like that. I actually considered the idea of putting a little clip onto the side of the mounted cannon so I could attach it in like that. But other than that, I don't see an actual place where this fits into place. So you'll either have to display it with the figure or just simply leave it off. I guess while we are talking about the shoulder mounted cannon, we can go back and talk about the blast effect that came included with it as well. You can see here, it's been given a real nice frosted look. Frosted at least on the end while the rest of it's all been painted in a very bright looking blue. You can take that, obviously. Bring the cannon out. We just finished packing it up, but we'll bring it back out. And you'll see there's a little hole on the end of it. All you have to do is just take the supplied peg just on the end of it, and you'll fit that into the hole. Now, while you're doing this, don't apply too much pressure because, of course, you're going to be putting pressure onto that hinge joint. You can see that he does have that blast effect, which I just dropped. I'll have to go pick that back up. And that's really neat. I don't always display the Predators with those, simply just because I like to just display them in more museum poses. But if you are somebody that likes to set up a diorama where you have various Predators Yauches fighting one another, or let's just say fighting Xenomorphs, it's always nice to be able to incorporate those blast effects, because then you can kind of play out more of a battle scene with all the various figures and various Predator figures that NECA have released over the years. Stalker Predator will also include two variations of the smart disc. One closed up ideal for throwing, the other one open ideal for close quarters combat. In both the cases, as you can see, the details certainly pop on both the pieces as NECA opted to decide to use a more grungier metallic gold for painting both the pieces. I really like the look of these. They do fit into their hands, not well, mind you. If you take the existing hands, even the ones that default out of the packaging like this, you can actually take it and fit this onto the finger like that. And you can actually fit these also onto the fingers on the side here as well. It does involve just a little bit of bending that finger to get that in place. But you can see that the Predator does hold the smart disc in his hand. You can also take the one that's folded up. And anybody that's been collecting Predator figures over the years, you know exactly where these go. It goes right into this supplied leg holster. Admittingly, the uh, smart disc doesn't fit very well in there. A lot of times, it just barely stays in there. Th the thing is, the mold is exactly the same size as the smart disc, so it's really only just friction forced in there. A lot of times, what I tend to do, as you can probably see here from the side, is I push one end of the smart disc down, tucking it into almost the flapped area of the holster, where it almost, like I said, does a pretty good job of staying in place. If you have these figures on display, 
and you put the smart disc in the leg holster, generally they stay pretty good. If you are picking the figure up though, that's usually a lot of times when these smart discs fall out. That being said, I'm going to take this out now. I'm going to put this to the side so I don't lose it. Figure also includes a trophy. An ideal, if you ask me, suitable accessory to becoming included with these Predator figures. Why not throw in human body remains? Skulls are obviously the best thing for trophies, at least for a Predator. And it's a decent looking skull, all things considered. There's no blood on this one. It almost seems to have a slight more age to it. Perhaps it's a skull he's had for a long period of time. I'm not really sure why specifically there's a peg hole located on the underside of the skull. I thought perhaps it could have been a case where it fit to the top of the combi stick, but it's not quite the same shape you can see right there. The combi stick almost has like a star formation. This has almost like almost like a, a full circle with a little section cut out of it. Like I said, it doesn't really intend to fit on there. And I wasn't sure really where else it could actually go. Now, obviously, you can just simply put this into the Predator's hand, which I think for the purpose of displaying the figure for myself is going to be the route I'm going to go. Again, I always appreciate the fact that we do get ourselves trophies with these Predators. I hope they continue to trend with future releases, because even if you don't decide to display it with this specific Predator, I could easily find a suitable Predator to hold the skull, in at least in the case that we get here with the Scout Predator, or with the Stalker Predator. That being said, we'll move that to the side as well. Predator has various different hand replacements as well. Currently, right now, I'm just using the defaulted extended finger hands that he came with the box, well, came out of the box with. He also comes with a couple of gripping hands as well, suited for holding the combi stick, suited for holding as well the smart disc. And he also comes with like another grabbing hand as well. So it comes with a couple of variations that you can swap him out for. We'll put those to the side. Then, of course, the main thing, the main attraction generally when it comes to these Ultimate Predator releases, Stalker Predator also comes included with a swappable head sculpt. I figure before we get down to looking at that, we would actually pick the figure up. That sounds good. I'm going to pick the figure up, get a closer look at him first. And then from there, let's just fold the cannon down here. From there, we're then going to go ahead and swap the head sculpt off because I really do like the head sculpt on this guy. But I want to first show you guys the defaulted helmeted version of the Stalker Predator. It's really a fantastic looking sculpt. Something about having the vents there located on the side, I can only assume they're almost breathing vents, really does add to the little bit of extra appeal to this particular head sculpt. It very much reminds me of City Hunter Predator in the sense that it almost has a more insectoid, almost organic design to it. It definitely has a, not the cleanest, smoothest looking texture, there's a lot of, as you can see, like little imperfections, little dents, little scratches, a big long crack running from the one side and stretching its way across almost the entire stretch of the top of the helmet. It's got some glorious looking color. Again, going back to a point I mentioned with the smart disc, NECA's use of this grungier metallic gold not only works well for that accessory, but works exceptionally well when it comes to this particular head sculpt. Now, of course, I'm sure it goes without reasoning that you can't remove this particular helmet. That's the whole point of having the swappable head sculpt, is that you can then pop this head off and replace it with the one that we get along with the figure. Before we get a closer look, though, at the rest of the figure, just one last time showing you guys the detailing. I appreciate as well that they've given us this woven mesh sculpting to the interior of his eyes, as opposed to just simply painting that in black. It adds just a little extra something, just a little something, something for the light to bounce off of. And you can see all the nice sculpting that they've incorporated into that. Now, of course, as we move to the rest of the figure, traditional looking armor comes into play here with Stalker Predator. He has himself a rather interesting looking trophy, though, more a necklace, I suppose, than anything else. Uh, he does come with these sashed bags, little sachets here on the sides, these little carry-all bags, for example. These, of course, will be carrying other things along with him when he goes for his hunt. But if I move it just out of the way, he comes with this really interesting looking necklace, which, as you can see right in the center there, has a Yaucha helmet, at least a head sculpt right there. That's a nice touch as well. Nice little bones also that they put onto the side. This is all done in rubbery plastic, but you still will want to be careful with these. I kind of prefer when they use plastic or this rubbery material when it comes to straps as opposed to using real roping. It just kind of it adds well to the fact that the rest of the figure already uses a material like plastic anyways, that they keep it consistent with the way it looks. As I said, he does have this little side bag here, a little holstered bag. 
that just drapes to the side. I suppose if you wanted to, you could take this off. When we go to remove the head, you can easily just probably pop that right off. If you find it's a nuisance and you don't want that to be actually on the figure. Then we've got ourselves the loincloth where he actually has almost a secondary piece that drapes over top of this. Now this is a separate piece altogether, but then you've got this extra part that drapes over top of it. And again, they didn't use threading here. What they've done is they've sculpted in roping using the same rubbery material as the rest of the figure. Something I really haven't even talked about yet is the colorer palette that they used for this particular figure. We've already mentioned the fact that he does have this kind of darker, grungier looking gold, but one thing certainly to point out is this almost tiger printing that he's got on his body. These bright, very, very bright yellows and bright rusted browns really does pop on this particular figure. And it quite works well, if you ask me, when you compare it against the rest of the gold and the brown that he has in his armor. It's that little bit of pop of color that really goes a long extra mile for me. Of course, we already looked at the holster. There's a, there it is on the side where the smart disc is going to go. Glorious looking color there on the hands, the legs. Now, the interior of the legs actually are a more lighter variety, kind of a creamish colored white, where the outer end of it, it actually has all that tiger striping that I really like so much. Moving a little bit further down, of course, we've got the gauntlets. The gauntlets actually on his legs seem to be the brightest of all the things on the figure. They're still kept to a very almost, I don't want to dare say bright, pristine nature, while there's definitely still a lot of imperfections to it, it definitely is the brighter coloring of all the armor that he has. Quickly looking at the back of the figure. This is so neat. I like the fact that this folds in. I know I already talked about that, but the fact that they actually have a fold-up version of the shoulder-mounted cannon is just such a great design on this particular character. I continue to say this, and I hate to sound like a broken record every single time I review a brand new NECA Predator figure. The last time I did this, the last time I had a look at a Predator figure, I think was Lost. Or it might have actually been Scout. I don't think I like Scout as much as I like Stalker. I loved Lost. And more and more, as the time I've been spending here looking at Stalker Predator... I might even just say he may be my favorite right now. And I don't want to think that it's a continued trend every single time I'm having a look at a brand new NECA Predator figure. Because while I did like Scout, Scout I didn't like as much as Lost. I almost even say that I could say that this is mirrored parallel to Lost in the way that I feel about this figure. I think in both the cases of Lost and now Stalker, this is probably these two are probably some of my new favorite releases of the Predator brand from NECA Toys here. Trying my ever best not to gush any further about NECA Predator figures. And then, of course, we're having a look at the alternate head sculpt. Okay, bear with me for a little bit here. Getting included with a Stalker Predator, you get an alternate head portrait with comes without, of course, the helmet. Now, I am of the school that I like to display my Predator figures primarily with the helmets on, just because the helmets are so unique to one another. There are often cases where I find myself going out and buying a second version of that Predator, simply so I can display him with di two different looks. I've done that just recently with the Lost Predator. Picked up a second one of them so I could display one with that really cool cybernetic looking helmet and then one without the helmet. I may find myself doing the exact same thing with Stalker Predator because while my favorite of the two is the helmet portrait, I gotta admit there's a lot of good stuff going on here with the alternate version as well. Now when I'm looking at this, I'm getting very much that vibe of a jungle hunter sculpt, especially when you see it here specifically with the mouth and the mandibles. When you tilt it up, I get very much that vibe of City Hunter with some really nice, vibrant color. That same tiger striping color that I enjoyed about Stalker Predator's body gets really done well here across the full landscape of the plastic here on his head. I feel like the colors are just slightly darker or slightly richer to what we get on his body. You pro also can probably see by based the studio lights reflecting off the plastic that it seems like the paint also has a little bit of extra sheen going for it as well. You can see all the little side hairs there sticking out from the sides of his temple. But if you look at along the top of the crest, hey, that looks like Batman. One thing that they have done right here is they've painted the back of the crest, right at the very top of the crown, I suppose, all done in black. But then they've outlined it in this yellowish beige color. I don't know if it's supposed to look like this necessarily. It does a pretty good job of outlining this Batman-like shape. On the sides, though, it's slightly off. 
And I don't know if it's supposed to look like that or if it's just a factory error where the paint just overlapped it because it doesn't quite outline those areas in black. Short of that, I really like this head sculpt a lot. You can spin this around and you can see on the back, you still got the dreads. And each one of them are separate from the last. Each one have the gold painted uh, little ringlets there also added in there as well. Okay, let's swap out the head sculpt. I know I'm spending a lot of time looking at the details on this guy. One thing I did do with the Stalker Predator in preparation to swapping out the head sculpt here is I did take off the back cannon. Just because it's a lot easier, I find, to hold on to the figure, especially around the area of the torso, to grab access to his head. Just pop that off like that. You put that head sculpt down for the time being, and we'll replace it with the alternate head sculpt. Usually when it comes to these Predator figures, I like to put it on the back area here and then just drape it forward so the hairs don't inadvertently get caught into that joint area. But all you're really going to do is you're going to line up that post, line it up to, of course, that peg hole, and then you're going to fit the head down. Now, this particular head I find is a little bit more stubborn to actually get into place. The few times I've already done this, it seems like the head is still a little difficult to actually get in there. So what I may end up doing is either submerging a little bit of it in hot water, or I may just take a hairdryer and just heat that ball peg there, the ball hole that actually fits onto the peg. Just heat that a little bit so it slightly softens the plastic. It should make things a lot easier than when you pop the head into place. That being said, this is what he looks like with the alternate head sculpt. And again, I'll just bring in the helmeted head sculpt so you guys can see the difference between the two. It's really hard. I'm torn. Well, I'm not torn necessarily because I'm ultimately going to settle on this one. But I feel like I am probably going to go out and get myself a second one of these just so I can display the Predators with both different looks. That being said, let's get a closer look at the articulation on the figure. So the head does have a ball joint. Of course, that ball peg joint that we had a look at there. It does move up, it does move down, and you can also rock it back and forth. As for the arms, the arms hinge out. He does have, to his credit, these softer plastic flaps that are on his armor. And where the flap is located, especially the larger of the two, is pegged at the ball joint, or pegged at the bicep area. It's pegged right there. So when you are moving the arms up, for example, these do pretty good of a job of staying out of the way. At least this one does. This one's a little bit bigger. But at least what they've done is they've pegged it here instead of pegged it up at the top here. Now you can, of course, move the arms back and forth perfectly fine. Um, I didn't actually find that this figure was any bit any bit of difficulty getting this guy out where he had really tight joints. Um, if you ever get a figure like NECA out of, out of packaging, out of box, I always recommend to really go through the guy, go through whatever figure you have, and just kind of check all the joints. Just slowly work your way through them. You don't even necessarily have to give them water baths. I know some collectors have done that, but I find more than anything else, just a little bit of patience, a little bit of extra time on your hands. Just kind of go through those joints and make sure everything is nice and limber. With that being said, though, he does have the double hinges on the elbows, double hinge on the elbow. And then, of course, his hands, whatever hands you decide to display the figure with, does have the peg hinge joint as well. So you can move that back and forth and you can rotate the hand all the way around. As for his upper torso ball joint, he's got him. As for his upper torso, he has himself a ball joint. As for his lower torso, he also has a ball joint. So good range of motion there. The legs split out. This one leg is a little on the tighter side. Now, I may even go in there. While I had no issues really with the rest of the figure, it's just really this one joint right there. I may just try to take a hairdryer and just see if I can soften that up a little bit. That might help just to free up maybe a little bit, bit of paint buildup that's in there. But it just is a little on the tight side, at least on this one side. But as for the legs, the legs go forward, back, out. You can swivel at the top of the thigh, basically just where it's pegged into place. He has a double hinge on the knee. And then when it ha the course comes to his feet, you can move those back and forth, up and down, and you can rotate them all the way around. And there is the Stalker Predator. What a great looking figure. He's got a lot of good stuff going for him. A lot of cool accessories that we also haven't seen before with other, other Yaocha releases from NECA Toys. Now the real problem I'm going to be facing now is how I'm going to display the figure for myself. I think ultimately what I am going to be doing, like I mentioned earlier in this review, is I'm probably going to display him with the alternate head sculpt with the helmet on. Just because I think that helmet is so super cool. 
But if you leave it with me, if you leave it with me, I could probably see myself picking up a second one of these so I could display a Stalker Predator with two of his d distinct looks. Because I really like this tiger printing, the coloring, the vibrancy that they put into the head sculpt. And of course, I also like Batman. And I can't help but notice that the top of his crest looks a little bit like the Cape Crusaders symbol. And I'm just throwing that out there. That kind of makes Stalker Predator just a little bit cooler as well. You know, over the course of this review, as we've been having a look at Stalker Predator, there was something rather familiar about the color scheme that NECA Toys used for this particular figure. This tiger striping that I praised so much, I know I had seen it somewhere before. Then, sure enough, I was able to find the right filing cabinet of my brain, and it dawned on me, Mortal Kombat's Kentaro. I know, obviously, the two ones aren't connected to one another, but he does have very much that familiar Kentaro color scheme with the tiger striping, which works really well, I might also say, with this particular figure. The bronze, that tarnished-looking gold, really does resonate when you've got it against the backdrop of the brighter tiger-striped colors. It also works really well with the alternate head sculpt, too, though I may still find myself displaying this particular Predator with the helmeted head sculpt. There's a lot of merits as to why you would want to display him without the helmet. And ultimately, it's probably going to resort me going up. Oh, I'm going to do I mean, I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to probably go out and buy myself another one of these so I could display the Predators with his two distinct looks. I've already done that with Lost Predator. After I had finished the review of Lost Predator, I liked both the head sculpt that I just ultimately went out and got myself another Lost Predator. Oh, I just see myself going down the rabbit hole again here with Stalker Predator. Again, like I said, he's got some really cool accessories. The head trophy is a nice touch. I love the, the back cannon that goes on the back of the, the torso, of course, where that cannon can fold and compact itself for easy storage. I haven't seen that bit get done, actually, with a lot of Predator figures in the past. So it's really neat the fact that they were able to incorporate some new things here. Of course, here in Final Looks, I've got him holding his smart disc, one of two he comes included with. That hand, by the way, that slightly more closed clamp hand, is ideal for holding that smart disc. So if you don't want to have it actually on his fingers and you want to actually have him looking like he's throwing it, use that smaller gripped hand. It's just perfect for it. I'm really liking how Stalker Predator turned out. For the time being, until I do get myself the second one of these, and I just know I'm going to do it, I'm probably going to display the figure with the helmet. And that's just my own personal preference. Which way do you like to display Predators for yourself? That could be the video question for today. Do you like to display your Predators with the helmet on? Or do you like to display the Predator figures with the helmet off? That could be your video question for today. I'd also like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provide the sample of Stalker Predator that we had a look at in this review. If you guys are new to this channel and you're liking all the content you're seeing, could you consider the idea then of staying on board? Staying on board the SS Minnow and see how far this three-hour tour will take us. But make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and of course, keep those things, those peepers of yours peeled because there's going to be a lot more NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.